Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by myself Vulcan and Attack Power. Hey everyone, Attack Power here. In this video we have for you game 1 of a best of 5 between Yamin and Mamil in the Division 1 Season 10 playoffs of the Still Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Orsha North and are now left in the red team playing on the allied side. We have Yamin using the 44th Guards Rifles with the Maverick deployment type. And on our right in the blue team playing on the Axis side we have Mamil using the 20th Panzer and the Maverick deployment type. What do you have to say about this matchup? Some spicy divisions. Yeah, great divisions. Two really solid. I don't know if 20th would be my first choice for this map. Uh, I mean, it's got tools for every map, so it's never bad, but it wouldn't be my first choice. 44th definitely has some great tools for this map, you know, um, in terms of off map, especially uh, for clearing things out. Um, I mean, all I can really say about Yaman's deck is SU-152 spam. He, he, he's got he's got 10 of them, so I'm sure we'll see that level of fun. Um, Emil looks like he's going to really flex his, his Martyr 1s this game. Both players with double C-phase card of infantry, so they're... They're expecting this to go long, and on a Maverick income mirror, that makes me a little sad. But hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, Yamin yeah, I mean, can use those T-34, 1944s, SU-152 combi, uh, 20th Panzer. Boy, the Stalin might come in handy. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, let's have a quick look at what's going down here. For Yamin, yeah, on the top left, we have some tankos. We've got some guards DP. We've got the PTRS, a 50mm mortar. Going to be going for that nice micro. It's got the Sepedicom Rotti and the T3476. Further down, we have the 45mm SG43 and the Givalia DP. Uh, further down on the hill, we have the Tankos Guards SG43, a 25mm AA, and the SU152, which is going to be able to cover the open. And on the very bottom, uh, contesting there, we have a bunch of Guard DP. PTRS leading the charge with a 45mm Sepedicom Rotti, Tanko, and Sepedi. Over on the side of Mamil, on the top right, we have the Panzer III, a couple of Flampanzer, as a strip and Panzer Trek. Further down, we have the Aufklader Flammenwerfer IG. Uh, into the mid, it's going to be a Flammenwerfer, as a strip and some Aufklader, the Panzergren, and the FK 76mm AT gun. On the very bottom side, we're going to see a large concentration of forces the Sturm Pioneer, the Erzas Truppen Flammenwerfer, uh, leading the way with the Pioneer Führer. The Panzergrenz in the half track there, as well as the staple Panzer III, is the Panzer III M recon, Panzer III L, and the Panzer IV F1 for fire support. Yeah, it should be interesting. It's not surprising to see Mamil push hard south. You basically have three flags down there that you can grab, so it's a natural place for blue side to push. On the flip side, up north, red technically has three flags up north that they can capture. Uh, generally speaking, red has a better chance of getting into the town of the opposite town in the center of the map, uh, while blue has to struggle a little harder. That's why we see Mamil really not going to try that to get into the opposite town in the center. Uh, not exactly surprising, because again, it's just rough for his side to get there. And off we go. Indeed. Uh, I think Mamil, he feels very comfortable on the 20th Panzer. Um, I was watching your pro talk video with him. And he seems to really like the deck, and he used it well in the semi-final. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's why he's bringing out here in the final. Uh, you guys should definitely check that out. Obviously, you might be watching this on Attack Powers channel already. And uh, if you oh, want, make you. sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> oh, what a guy. You guys should do that. You put a lot of time. It means a lot. See a GO145B. Yeah, 20th Panzer is a great division. Has been forever. I don't think it's ever been bad. And uh, I feel like it's a little underappreciated right now. It, people don't ban it. It's often left unbanned. And uh, I, it's a fun division to play. It really is. Uh, GO145, he specifically mentioned these little these little buggers with their napalm bombs. Uh, he's going for the uh, Gavardi DP and the M2s, but unfortunately can't get on target up north. He can't find a target yet, though. He's going to swing back for that SG-43 there. Um, yeah, so... Both these players are going to meet down south, especially looks like where the heaviest fighting is going to be to start. Yeah, the PTRS managed to dismount the Urzat Serpent and cause a little bit of damage there. The Geo obviously forced back by the 50 cows. On the top side, it doesn't look like the PTRS managed to find many kills at this high level. It's actually really rare that you see these uh, P 
PTRS is, PTRD is actually finding kills initially, unless both players are extremely aggressive. But I think both Yamin and Mamil actually have relatively similar play styles. Yeah, well, it's really funny because we see the Geo 145 and the U2 LNB, both of these dirt cheap recon bombers, 20 points and 25 points respectively, that can actually give you a lot of value if no one shoots them down. Yeah, they're just the pilots just staring at each other. <laughs> they're going to have a duel with their rear gun. <laughs> it's like a World War One all over again. <laughs> Though I don't think the Geo has a rear gun, so it's a bit outclassed. I think it does. But the nice napalm coming in there onto the SG 43. A nice free kill for the mill if that goes down to the napalm, which it should do unless it escapes. It always takes a little while for that napalm to kick in. Yeah, it's certainly not like war game napalm. That there was like <laughs> everything dies. SU-152 picking up the IG-18 there on the hill. Big lots there, actually. He, if he loses that Flammenwerfer, there's nothing there on the hill to stop anything. Down south, his um, Emil's push is actually going quite well. Took out the 45 mil, and now his triple, well, his double Panzer three and then Panzer IV push. There's not really anything here to stop it. Yeah, he's got a massive armor advantage down here as he approaches the Guards DP. These Guards DP, when they have two vet, can actually be pretty spicy with their PTRDs. Uh, over time they will chip the health of these Panzer threes because they do have limited armor. Uh, this guard's DP here looking for the open top grenade with a PTRD shot in the back of that. <laughs> Surprised it didn't manage to get the kill. Bouncing the shot onto the Panzer three. Looks like that one will just get simply overrun and surrendered. Yeah, Mamil making good progress down here now. T-3485, 1944 is going to be a bit of an issue depending on how... I mean, these Panzer threes are right on the edge of the... T the hill here so that t345 will get a shot ju87 through the middle here going after the su152 fortunately for Mamil, this is the first of many of these <laughs> he's gonna have to deal with yeah the 25 mil is in a good position though on top of that hill it has a good line of sight and is gonna probably end up shooting that down very effectively the ju87 just not very fast not enough resilience taken out T-3485, meanwhile, engaging now the Panzer IV F1 and the Panzer III. They're both trying to get off the hill as quickly as possible uh, in the face of that superior armor. Yeah, he did take one Panzer III out already. And up north, uh, important not to miss, Yaman making progress up north, kind of wiping out Mamil's defense there. And I don't think Mamil sent a small amount of stuff. He had a good amount. But his T-3476 killing off the SDK of Z-71s, Panzergren already pinned down. And, uh, yeah, that Sturm Pioneer in a dangerous spot with that Gavardia DP there. It's going to get killed off. Urzats are not going to do it. Uh, only a Sturm Pioneer. So I don't know, I'm not sure if Mamil has picked up on how dangerous his position up there is. Yeah, it looks like Mamil making progress in the bottom side. His Flampans are actually getting a lot of value. Taking out, surrendering one unit, taking out the PTRS afterwards. So that's good. Mamil has complete bottom side control, but... As you mentioned, Yaman really making progress on the top side. Uh, he's probably going to surrender this Urzaz weapon very quickly. And uh, might be able to pick up the Panzergren as well, although it looks like they're getting deep enough into the forest to avoid the T-34 for the time being. That Panzer IV F1, <laughs> is it going to try for it at close <laughs> range? Because I don't think it would have a good time. I mean, it's got the 100 millimeters of pen, and since you're right next to it, accuracy should be basically 100%. So, I mean... Which actually might have a chance, unless it wastes all its heat shells on this M2A1. But because it's a <laughs> it, it missed. <laughs> because it's a heat round, it actually doesn't have as much penetration rate because it's flat penetration, 100 mils versus 90 mils. So it wouldn't even be like 100 percent. It would be like 50 or 40 even. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. Now the tanko in the in the forest are going to absolutely crush this Panzergren. Well, the Geo is trying to save the day. Uh, Mamil down south is he's being held up now. Uh, Yaman's doing enough just to hold up this push it for the moment. Uh, Panzer three trying to take out this Gavardia DP. Uh, basically, both players are kind of trading sides here. Uh, for those who don't know, Orsha North is kind of a symmetrical map. Uh, so, you know, it's not exactly symmetry, but it's very similar on both sides. Yeah, this Panzer track has a lot of work to do on the top side that Mamil's just brought in. He's really got to shut down both of these 1942s. We've seen Mamil again in the semi final do a lot of work with Panzer tracks. Uh, so we'll have to see if it pays off this time around. Flam Panzer come around the corner on the bottom side, engaging the Gars DP. These PTRDs are pretty scary for the Flam Panzer, as we see the one up on the ridge <laughs> get the kill, uh, but not quite managing to surrender that Guard DP in time. 
Yeah, Mamil's still being able to... He still kept his Panta 3s and such alive. They're still around. Uh, and at close range, they are dangerous to the T-3485. Uh, there's no question of that. Panther Shrek up north, gonna find that T-3476. Nice kill there. Uh, nothing to be upset about there. P uh, Gavardi DP, though, gonna find that SDK of Z-251. 50 mil chasing after that Panthergren. Uh, Mamil, I mean, yeah, Mamil definitely needs some more reinforcement there, but he's got none coming in. Instead, bringing in a Flak 43 and an FK 288 for the hill to cover off uh, the hill on the opposite side. Definitely a good play, but he's in a dangerous spot here. Yeah, if he completely relinquishes that hill, it's going to be very difficult to get back up on. Whereas Yamin on the bottom side has some what managed to keep a concentration of force on the very edge, whereas Mamil just doesn't have that on his side. So there's a bit of a disparity in that regard, and that could definitely affect things going forward. Panzerstreck is spotted by the T-3476, and that is not good news because it means the Panzerstreck will be taken out with no more effect. Yep, and uh, I, I feel like personally it's harder to get back in that northern hill from blue side than it, I think it's a little easier from red side to get back in that red hill. I'm not, yeah, both sides it sucks, but Mamil obviously, I mean, Yaman in a much stronger spot down south than Mamil is up north. Absolutely. And these T-34s are slowly encroaching on the Panzer III and the Panzer III IV. The T-34-85 can actually get quite aggressive there. The Panzer III L with its uh, APCR can certainly cause problems, uh, but won't get the kill in one shot. It would take like three shots, I think, to kill the T-34-85-1944. And in that yes. time, the Panzer III is just going to go down. And, and honestly, in this case, the Panzer III doesn't even get one shot off before it goes down to those two tanks. Up north, the Flampanzer showing its its colors again, pinning down a Gavardia DP successfully. Uh, the buffs to that thing way back when were really necessary. They're actually semi-useful now. Uh, very specifically semi-useful, but semi-useful. Yeah, was it like an ammo buff? Because it always used to run out of ammo a, before it used well, to that, pin and think down. <laughs> yeah, that and they gave them a like range increase, I think, and a rate of fire increase as well. I mean, they were really bad before. Uh, we yeah. see Double Martyr 1 on the hill down south, so good answer to the T-3485s if they're in range. Uh, certainly a very good, cost-efficient answer, because you can buy two Martyr 1s and it's still not as much as the T-3485. Yeah, only 50 points piece. Uh, the 45mm AT gun was taking pot shots on the Martyr. One of the Martyrs actually took a penetration, so Yamin, yeah, mean, if he moves that back forwards, might be able to find a kill, but yeah, the infantry of Mamil is actually suffering quite badly in this close range engagement like the Sapodi, the Tankos they're making it hard for the Flammeveer for Schlumpanias to actually make ground because the Molotovs always throwing first is a real pain but Mamil getting a cheeky flag on the top side with the Serzats to open as he moves that up the edge of the map yeah it won't last long and that and that was my initial question with 20th 20th again great division but CQC definitely not its strong suit uh, and, and 44th isn't anything crazy with its CQC, but it's still better. Uh, T-3045 down south takes out one of the Martyr 1s at max range, so that's definitely the issue with the Martyr 1s. It does not have the 2k range to kill these 1930, uh, 1944s. Uh, so he's down to 1, and that's definitely not as good as having 2. Yep. It just makes it to that point where you don't have the 2 shots going off, and you need the 2 shots to get the kill. Instead, you're just, you know, rolling the dice. It's going to be pretty close. Or so, well, T-34, 76, finding and killing the Panzer IV F1. Uh, these Panzer III's, Panzer IV's, probably not finding really half as much value as Mimil would like in this matchup so far. Yeah, I'm not... I, I don't love Panzer III's versus T-34, 76's. Uh, they, they're not trading up that much. They often lose the fight. Uh, it's, it's much better when they're trading up to, say, a Sherman or uh, a Stug 3 if you're playing the mirror match or something like that. It feels a lot better in those situations. Yeah, the 90 mils of frontal armor like forces the Panzer III to use its APCR, and because it takes like three shots for the Panzer III to kill, whilst it only takes yep. two shots for the T-3476, it just doesn't really work out. But the Panzer Gren there finding a nice Panzer Faust kill onto the T-3476-1942. T-3485-1944 forced to back off. Uh, Mimil also falling back for the time being. Yep, and we're now into B phase, so both players unlocking their full potential now. Uh, up north, we see a Panzer III versus a T-34-76, and this is exactly what I was talking about, Just it's, especially at these mid-ranges here. Uh, it can't use its APCR, it's too far away, 
it's not going to pen and it will die itself. So it, it's just not a good matchup. Yeah, complete waste there. These uh, FK 288s are trying to get into position to find shots to kill the T-34-76, but Momo stopped moving them. And uh, so Yaman's just kind of still using the buildings to keep those hidden. On the bottom side, we've got the Panzer 3s coming in now, though. And if he's able to get critical mass between the Marder and the Panzer 3s, now that the T-34-76-1942 died, you might be able to rush down the, the 1944 closer. Although the 1944 further back on the ridge is a problem. And yep. currently, Yamin is using his high ground here very nicely indeed. Yeah, those. Uh, for a reminder for people, the FK-288 is a ZIS-3. Uh, is, a, is a captured ZIS-3 gun. So uh, all the benefits and sadnesses of the ZIS-3 also there. Yeah, that T-3045 on the hill is going to be a big issue. He doesn't have anything 2K to deal with that. Uh, and yeah. That's just going to be rough for him to have to deal with. Yeah, unless he gets like the Boyz Stalin up here. But he's going to be bringing that actually into the middle of the map now. Uh, the Panzer IV is going to be the choice on the bottom side. Still do have like decent penetration. Actually really good for uh, engaging and uptrading against T-34, yes. 85, 1944s if he can get in range. So we'll have to wait and see if that comes to fruition because that is a three vet Panzer III, Panzer IV G and they are only 65 points compared to the 110 of the T-34-85-1944 yeah it's one of the few situations I actually really like Panzer IVs is trading up to T-30-45s uh, because they do quite well in that role uh, in that situation up north though M M uh, Yaman finally taking that flag yeah sorry the one health AT gun on the bottom side <laughs> Finding the Panzer three kill, <laughs> it managed to get both of its shots off before it died. Always, <laughs> very nice, very nice. The thing is, too, you just see Yaman just always on top of his micro. He doesn't miss anything ever. Uh, it's it's actually very frustrating when you play him. <laughs> he never misses anything. I mean, Yaman doing the same, of course. Um, both of these players deservedly in the final. And uh, putting on a fantastic show. Things very, very tight at the moment. It's been sitting on 12-12 for a long time. We're now 13-11. Yamin chipping away at some of Mamil's tickets now. And it seems like Mamil, slowly but surely, getting the better of Yamin's forces on this bottom side. It looked like Yamin had a better hold on the bottom than Mamil had on the top. But it's slowly going Mamil's way on the bottom. So we're just seeing more or less a mirror across the map right now. Yeah, now I, I, I'm, I'm assuming Emil's plan here is to break that mirror with by opening up the the middle with his Boite Stalin, because there's not a lot that that 44th can do about that thing. Uh, there's really nothing in there's there's nothing in Yaman's deck that can cleanly kill that. Yeah, he would have to find side shots with the T3485s, and it looks like he is starting to move T3485s towards the middle uh, in order to potentially engage that. Uh, but it would al almost require him to take back the bottom hill so that he can, you know, get a shot from that direction. Unless he kind of tries to push across the open first with the T-3485. It's going to be very difficult to find. He almost did get a side shot. The T-3485 down south actually did have a line of sight in that Boite Stahl and it moved out of the way just in time. That would have been really unfortunate for him. Up up uh, north, the FK-288, finding that ZIS-3. Definitely need to kill that off because that thing will cut off his reinforcement road here. And it's going to be really bad because he'll lose that f third flag up north. Um, the other option for killing the Boitus Stalin is to just throw like 15 SU-152s at it. <laughs> that would definitely do the job too. Yeah. Um, and that looks like it might be his plan. And Yaman with a huge batch of reinforcements down south. And uh, Mamil not nearly as huge. Might be an issue. He is bringing an SK-18-105 RD piece. Great counter-battery artillery piece. Not sure what exactly he's planning to hit with it. Maybe AA. There's the SU-76M at the back. Maybe he saw that fire and wanted to bring in something to counter-battery. But it's going to be hard to kill that uh, as it is a mobile artillery piece. Um, but the, the weird thing about this bottom side engagement right now is, is of course, Mamil's bringing in Panzergrenz. 
Oh, well, so Yamin's bringing in specialized close range infantry in the form of the Sapiri and the yeah. Tankos. So this matchup is is not fantastic for him. The Sturm Pioneer might be able to clean up one of the low health uh, Sapiri squads, but if it engages both the Tanko and the Sapiri at the same time, then the Sapiri will probably get its TNT off as well. And that Sturm Pioneer is just going to go down. Yeah, they were bunched up on top of each other, which would have given the Sturm Pioneer a chance, but then they spread out at the last second, unfortunately for him. Uh, that's not going to, you know, won't help his cause at all. IG-18 getting in position on the center hill, trying to support that Sturm Pioneer there and kill that Tanko Desaniki, but that's pinned down from the SG-43, and now Mamiya will lose his pressure on that flag as well. T-34-76 up north finally goes down to one of those FK-288s. That's a big kill. He needed that armor out of there, and he actually was able to re-grab that very most northern flag with his couple little troops here. So we see the Panzergrens engaging the guards DP at close range. I mean, even the Gars DP have the advantage of having the PPSH, and the and the M2A1 coming in here is going to pin that down for the instant surrender. The Gars DP didn't even go down, and the PTRD might finish off the Panzer three oh, as a bounce. <laughs> Unfortunate there for the guards, although they didn't die to the shot. Oh no, he fell them back just before they fired. Uh, <sighs> so much potential. And again, that's just that's the issue with 20th on this map. You just don't have enough CQC. And yeah, you get the Pioneer SVTs, which are literally just Sapperties for the Axis. Um, and, and that's fine, but it's not anything over overwhelmingly good. Yeah, but we're still seeing the Sturm Pioneers Panzergrenz being the primary focus. The nice thing about the Panzergrenz, I guess, is in the light cover part of this area, is They're that great. they can project their MG42s on target. So that does do a lot of damage very quickly but yeah as soon as you get close to the sapody i mean even the sapody at mid-range and light cover are going to hurt because of the svts yes they're not a, they're, they're a, an effective line unit along with their cqc ability this panzer 3 now lost in the back lines it could do a lot of damage honestly i mean unfortunately it's not recon like if it was recon it'd be very dangerous it's not so it's not going to be overly dangerous Although all the Gavardia DP are dead and all that's left here are, you know, non-AT units. So even this Flammenpanzer here could be, could actually do a lot of damage. Yeah, it's, I think a lot of these half tracks actually are, are rather uncontested right now. Uh, this is 3 is going to have to put in a lot of work, especially regarding the Panzer 4 and Panzer 4 G that are pushing through. Uh, but it looks like he's waiting to pounce on this T-34-85-1944. But the SU-152, oh, that's actually shooting at the Panzer 3L, which does find the penetration, but the Zis-3 finds the kill. Now the Panzer 4 is engaging the T-34-85 at this range. Plenty of penetration, but they are bouncing still. <laughs> oh, that's rage, unfortunate. Rage, 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 Well. Oh, my God. Mamil did not want to trade a Panzer 4 there. No. That, su that, was that a really sucks. <laughs> yeah, that was a... That was a bit of baloney right there. <laughs> that was not, uh, yeah. But up north, he's still holding that flag. Actually forced off that T-3476. This three might go down here. Does go down. Nice kill there. SK-18 doing good work. I mean, with radio, that thing is disgustingly accurate. It, it might as well be looking at it. Uh, the Flampanzer took out a 50 mil down south. That's a nice little kill there. Um, Geo... Uh, trying to kill the PTRS. Not sure what he was hoping for there. We see just an, a wall of SU-152s on that hill in the center. Kind of hilarious looking, but we knew that was going to happen at some point. Zis-3 managed to find a penetration onto the Panzer IV. That's going to leave it open, actually, to this T-3485. Um, the F-1 going down. But yeah, the Pan Panzer IV-G already damaged as well. That's one shot from dead. Uh, so he might lose all of his armor in this push, which would be really, really bad. Yep, yeah, goes down with and that shot. And he did. Ooh. And now those SU-152s can absolutely murder all the infantry here. Uh, no trouble at all doing that. Slowly but surely, it really feels like Yamin is finding value in all of these kills. Like if we look at the disparity of units right now, there is multiple SU-152s across the map. We've got like one, two, three, four, five SU-152s across the middle with one at the top there as well. And then there's a bunch of like T-34-85s accompanying all of those. Whilst, you know, on the side of Mamil, like, there's really not much armor left. You know, he's got the one mile no. on the bottom side. He's got the Boyd Stalin now moving up on top of the hill. 
He's got some extra reinforcements now coming in to replace that armor, but he, but he'd already lost it, right? So there is going to be a continuing disparity as we move forwards in this game as Yamin now pushes to a 14-10, taking the two flags on the top side. Yeah, and we're now into C phase, so both players with no ammo, uh, no income basically, and we're starting to see the Su-76 is doing some counter battery on the SK-18, and and while SK-18s are amazing counter battery units. They don't beat mobile artillery. Like, they just don't because they sit still. SU-152 goes down, actually, up north of the FK-288. That's a massive kill there, killing one of those. Um, you know, and that's one of the only issues with 20th Panzer. They don't really have armor 2K other than the Beute Stalin. Yeah. On the bottom side, Van Panzer going to be moving up, getting more value. Once again, I think Mimo, he really used these Van Panzers well. He, he always finds the right place to have them. Like, when... Like when you use them sometimes they can be very like hit and miss terrible it's <laughs> just like they die at range every time and and particularly against like the ptrds ptrs's they they do get taken out very easily normally but the mill finding all of the units that don't have at <laughs> and uh <laughs> really getting value out of these 25 point half tracks yeah and they're, and they're really necessary for 20th in these sort of situations because there's a lot of yellow forest on orsha north that you can take advantage of with them um but you know t30 45s are still going to be an issue yeah, so the sapoli forced off that flag it's going to bring it back to a 13 11 as mamel takes control there but the counter battery coming in from the su-76 as it oh. pretty much direct hits the sk-18 with one of those shots Another shot on target, and that's going to go down. Oh, that was close. Pioneer engaging in the open. Oh, there it goes. SK-18 goes down. But yeah, the other Pioneer also failing here. The guard DP with three vet. Taking out the pan pack 40 up on the hill. Big kill there. Ooh. Opens up a lot of room for these T-34 85s. And at this point in the game, with only 80 points per minute, like a pack 40 with 60 points, it's... Uh, actually a big loss oh it's massive a massive loss of income there um yeah i mean it's just yaman has a lot more support stuff alive and he's being able he's using his 2k assets really well and 20th panzer while it does have a fair amount of 2k stuff it, it's not actually it's not as flush with it as 44th is 44th has tons of 2k stuff yeah and i think um, emil was content to kind of play around the sort of mid-range bottom side here unfortunately couldn't quite make it work on the top side kind of relinquished that a lot quicker than i would have expected him to panzergren dp is now coming in to try and cut off the salient against the guards and the sapoli overextending in the mid there marder one's holding them back for the time being yeah i'm just not i'm not 100 percent sure what mamil does against this su-152 spam I'm not sure what you do to stop it. Boyter Stalin takes a pen up on the hill. That's a big, that's a big hit. Yeah, it looks like Yamin playing with the cover in the house there. Just Ooh, ducking in another. and out of cover whilst that Boyter Stalin struggles to get its gun on target in time. Mimil will most likely be babysitting that in terms of micro. He's also got the shot coming through from the light cover there, but the Mod is actually able to deal with that nicely. Yeah, that was a good. That was good. He needed that for sure. Su-152 on the hill, still doing tons of damage to everything it can find. It's just ground attacking now. A uh, ton of infantry though pushing back in down south, and it just looks like Mamil doesn't have as much there as he did before. <laughs> all of a sudden, which is a common feeling against Yaman. Yep. We see a Sapoli getting up on the hill. Oh, and the British Stalin goes down. The T-34-85, oh. 1944 peaks and finds the kill. Uh, the Sapoli, yeah, putting a little bit of pressure on the pack. Flak 43 there on the hill as well. Uh, Yamin is actually in a very nice position there. Pioneer Fjord going down to the bottom. He's giving the flag back to Yamin as well. So, yeah, this is, this is just looking really, really tough now for Mamil. This Panzergren down south with the Panzerfaust just has to move a few meters forward. Oh, the T-3485 responds before. Emil missing that opportunity there. Uh, Pioneer SVT unloaded in the center. He did leave those in the transports for a bit. Finally unloaded them. And now Yaman smelling blood up north is now pushing forward. I'm not even sure where he's planning to go exactly. There's nothing to capture other than the reinforcement road itself. Yeah, on Orsha North though, all the reinforcement road are quite short in terms of like 
the arrows and you have to capture the tip of the arrow in order to cut off the spawn so going that deep is not necessary unless he's just going to go up the hill from here which he might choose to do I thought that T3045 was going the distance, but he stopped. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a fast move order up the road now. <laughs> does he? Did he put it on? Yeah, he yeah, said he feels going. it. He's like, there's nothing to stop me. Here we go. <laughs> it's such a weird one to capture, though, because there's a road right next to it. Yeah. So it barely matters. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're not doing much. I mean, you can't. I mean, you have to cross through that whole forest area, which would suck. He did kill the. He killed the Pentagram DP. Yeah, he's going to take those out, and Mimmo will stop using that road to reinforce, but like, it's not really making a big difference to the outcome of this game right now, because it's still no. 14 to 10. And you'd expect Yamin to kind of want to increase his pit ticket lead by finding a 15-9 at this point. You would think so, wouldn't you? But he appears to have no desire other than getting the lols and capturing the uh, spawn point over there. Yeah, pack 40, meanwhile on the bottom side, the Mills pack 40 took out one of the SU-152s, so that was a good kill before it went down. But now under fire by the SG-43 and the Sniper, most likely to get taken out. There we go. Yeah, and that's not a great trade. Uh, the the SU-152 is, is not really that much more expensive. Of course, Yaman's got plenty more where that comes from, and uh, I don't. he does not have infinite pack 40s, that's for sure. Yeah, and at this point, I mean, yeah, we can probably just replace it with another one. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's kind of rough. Uh, this SU-152 support is allowing the Avtos to actually get into the bottom town here of the mill. And if that gets next to the Panzergrands, it will just delete them. Well, the Panzergrands will have a chance to catch them out in the open with their MG-42, since those buildings don't all connect there. Yep, north, uh, Yaman slowly creeping down south. The Double Martyr 1 can definitely deal with this T-3476 as long as they don't get any sort of hill pressure issues or anything like that. Although, looks like, oh, nope, only needed one shot to kill it. So lucky for that guy to finish that off. And now Yaman on the 16-8 getting the double tick. Yeah, he finally finds the double tick as his Avtos do manage to get into the town. He's going to be using line of sight here, or trying to, to get closer to the Panzergrenz, but the Mard is stopping him in his tracks. Yeah, the PTRS and the Sepedi moving up on the hill has found the extra flags that Mimil needed. This T-3485 sitting and blocking the spawn here is getting encroached upon by two Marda ones. Might need to be a little bit careful. Yeah, and, and down south, I mean... Yaman still holding that flag on the edge of the forest there, which is probably very frustrating for Mamil because, of course, he really needs that flag to bring it back to a 1410. Although he finally does, recaptures his flag on that northern central hill there. Um, Geo coming into spot for the Martyr 1 so the T3045 doesn't get the first shot off. Uh, and I, I'm surprised he. I mean, yeah, he definitely needs some Panzergrenz on this hill to stop these infantry from getting in over and over again. Martyr 1 is finding the T3045, oh. but still. Oh, ho, ho. No. <laughs> oh, the gun oh. jam is unreal. And now the second oh. Marda here, not getting into line of sight yet, and has actually gone to the side where it's it's deepest through the light cover. So it gives time for the T3485 to kill one of the Marda ones before the second even engages. That is oh. actually a pretty big mistake here from Mimil. The second shot coming through from the T3485. Marda that does finish the job. Looks like it was already damaged. Uh, so, job done. But yeah, that was a unfortunate gun jab. Ugh. Those crits, that and armor crack, are some of the most exciting and devastating crits in the game. Yeah, Mamil hasn't had the best of luck this game, has he? Yeah, we saw those bounces from the Panzer fours onto the T-34 earlier, and now we got that. <laughs> now, up north really quick, I want to mention an Erzatztruppen behind the lines that just unloaded a Zis-3 and a, a, a 25 mil. What a, what a wraparound. <laughs> Damn, what a hero. You wouldn't expect to see that from an Erzastropen with a Car 98. So that 25 mil might as well stop and just kill the Erzastropen, to be yeah. honest. Uh, but instead he's trying to move away with it, and they're falling back, so they can no longer really uh, stop that from getting the kill. But I don't think Mamil noticed, so it doesn't no, look he like didn't. he's going to get the kill himself anyway. He forgot it's there, and now the U2 is going to like force those to fall back, and I doubt Mamil will ever notice that thing again. But just a funny, 
Funny little moment there. On down south, Emil did finally grab that flag, killed off the T-3045 with his Martyr 1. Um, I mean, Mamil's holding Yama to a 1311. I gotta say, it's quite impressive. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like Mamil no. <laughs> is ever going to have a critical <laughs> mass to push back. So it's like a slow dying death that Mamil is holding on to the hope that maybe yep. he can find value. And I mean, there is potential for Yamin to throw the game like if he loses just like one or two too many t34s or something to these panzer fours uh it, it could turn around and, and really give mamil a big breakthrough on this bottom side for example uh but yeah it's it's, it's a long way to go and um mamil is running out of time yay maverick mirror <laughs> <laughs> you say that and mamil's bringing in two panzer grand dp a binary svt and two panzer fours at the same time so Storing up a bunch of points there in this late game to make a solid push all at once. See, if this was a balance match, though, that would be every tick happening. <laughs> True. The Panzergrenz trying to take background on the top side. Zapode, PTRS, uh, just going to be waiting to be killed by that. Uh, all of these infantry that are close to the Panzergrenz DP here are very low on numbers. It's the guard DP and the Sopari further back that are going to have to prevent that. More infantry on the way for Mamel. Looks like loads of reinforcements actually coming in for Mamel right now. Yeah, I guess he just didn't call anything in for a while. Didn't really notice. I mean, I get it. I, I float a lot of points all the time and everyone loves to tell me about it. I, I do understand the struggle. Yeah, 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 it does happen all the time, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's so it's so yeah, easy in hindsight oh, for, yeah. for, for the comments oh, to go, God. oh yeah, you're not you're not buying yeah. units. It's like somebody was in my comments the other day saying, Oh, you had three hundred points of units. I'm like, Yeah, that's two minutes of balanced income. Like <laughs> what do you expect? Like it's yeah, not that it, bad. I didn't, I didn't wait <laughs> that long. It's just, it's just all of a sudden it's there. Like And I don't I never feel comfortable having zero points. Like people are like call it all in, but like, like, what what if something desperately important happens? Like, and I need points right then. I don't know. And I, I'm a more reactive player. I get it. I, you you should continue to try to call points in. That's how you keep up pressure. But yeah, it, it's very easy to all of a sudden be floating a couple hundred points. Yeah, and sometimes you need those couple hundred points, especially if you're buying big units like IS twos and and other big boys like that. Uh, so. Yeah, sometimes it's necessary to, to save a few points. Anyway, the Pioneer SVT making a showing here, finally, on the bottom side. And uh, we'll potentially be able to contest his flag. Mimil will only go back to a 1311. He's really got to find the 1212 and then himself a 1311 um, yeah. as soon as possible. Because otherwise it's going to get harder and harder to get the tickets back before the end of the game. But this SDK is a 251 on the bottom side is uh, actually getting quite far up so he might be encouraged to make a bit of a push here with the armor he has on the bottom side now up north the issue is he just lost his flak 43 to this t38 485 that's flipped up uh slipped up onto the hill and there's no at to stop him martyr one's moving up but that one's damaged if i'm not mistaken oh maybe that's the one even further north not sure yeah it's the one in the like cover further north that was uh, ah. This, this Marder one is fresh, as far as I'm aware. The SK-18 can do the job as well, let's not forget. It does have 165 oh, yes. mils of penetration. And uh, I think the accuracy is actually not too bad on it. It's 35% at that range. It's not going to be too bad. More like relying on an IS-2. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Except they have their secret first shot accuracy buff that I still believe is real. <laughs> yeah, this one I'm saying, yeah, the that. Panzer IV engaging the t 3485 now oh that's a nasty oh. kill though another panzer four leader letting mamil down oh, <laughs> oh that's so man. sad it does he does get a penetration at basically max range which is actually pretty lucky uh now that, that is a 1943 t 34 so he actually has to get closer to do damage martyr one did get a pen on the t 3485 up north that's good but now all these avtos and gavardi dp are in the forest and there's not enough there to stop them yeah, so is this three on the bottom side actually getting shots onto this Panzer IV as well, damaging it? 
Um, this is, I feel like uh, the mill kind of got baited by this half track making so much ground. I was a little bit worried that this would happen where he saw it get so far up that he decided to commit with his Panzer fours there and ends up just running into all of these C-34s and, and get, getting taken out. Uh, one of the SU-152s did get taken out uh, by the Marders, uh, but yeah, two Marders and a Panzer three are going to struggle against three T-34 85s. Yeah, I, I think, too, that Mamil's starting to sense the desperation of his situation. He's only got 14 minutes left. He's got a lot of tickets to make up. I mean, he, he's, he's got to make a push or he's going to lose. Like, it's as simple as that. Yeah, he has opened up this bottom side, and it, I reckon Mamil probably feels comfortable in this bottom side. He just needs to uh, start really investing somewhere else on the map. Like, he's constantly bringing in reinforcements here, but it's not really finding him anything else just yet unless he can do potentially what Yamin has done to him by going on to Yamin's on Yamin's hill here and taking the flags yeah and and that's the issue there's not really a, there's a long way to go now he did take out another t 3045 with his martyr ones that's definitely a, a big plus there uh but his northern area is, continues to be pressured it's not like Yamin's led up at all uh and there's not much holding here Panzergren getting into the woods that's not great and he's probably out of CQC at this point as well, which is really bad. This Marder 1, one of them has gone down to the T-34-85, 1944 at max range. The second one is going to get hit and is falling back on this bottom side. That is not good news. The 3 vet T-34-85 surely going to secure that kill. Geo-45 also going down. This is more value going in the favor of uh, Mamil, although <laughs> somehow the T-34-85 missed that last shot. Yeah, always, always a question mark with accuracy in this game. <laughs> Yaman recapturing the flag on the central hill. Still 14-10, though. I mean, he, he's just really struck. I mean, when you lose three flags, it is really hard to get to a 59. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the 14-10, I think, just gives Mimil hope. And uh, the Pioneer SVT didn't quite manage to get their HG off here. Look at Yaman's micro here on this avatar on the bottom side. Running it backwards and forwards every time the pioneer is about to throw it, so HG it runs out of range and runs back forwards, yep. <laughs> slowly cutting down the <laughs> HG pioneer, and it really can't do anything about it. How does he have time for this? <laughs> Honest to God. And there you go, you pinned it. Yeah, and well now he can just sit there and finish it off. Beautiful, beautiful I stuff. If I used that kind of time on micro, I, I think an entire other front would have collapsed by that point. <laughs> True. Yeah. I think at this Truly. point, though, there's not too much going on. I think Yamin's just kind of comfortable. He's got a lot of his units sitting at range. Like, a lot of his T-34-85s and the SU-152s are relatively safe. You know, they're, they're sitting at max range or they're in cover. And he's only really using them when he, he decides to push up. Um, but I think for now... Yamin's a little bit worried about Mimil's position on this bottom side of the map now uh, since things have slowed down a lot and I wouldn't be surprised if Yamin was kind of content at this point to sit on the, the, the single tick to finish off the game. Oh yeah, he doesn't, and he's got such a huge advantage. Remember, there's only a 50 minute time limit so Mimil would have to get back to at least probably at this point a triple tick to make it up. I don't think he could win with a double tick, even from here. Yeah, it would be close. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. I think it's actually probably triple tick territory. So, Mamil yeah. needs to really just a move forwards, you know, <laughs> like just attack me and see what he can do. And and if he can break through, then you know maybe it'll work. But this Panzer four engaging this is three oh. here. That's not fun, and it will go down. Ah. Uh. Uh removing another piece of the puzzle pack 40 might be able to finish off the 122 there in the transport martyr one went down up north to the t 3045 which was like the only thing saving his his northern line here from this t 3045 i mean here we go let's see if the sk18 can do the job oh but he's already targeted he's targeted on the AA, which means he won't shoot the t 3045 yeah, oh, the SK SK is is it goes down uh, in the meantime <laughs> okay here we go it's got an attack move order all right, this is the moment. 
the moment we've all been waiting for. The SK-18 with the one it shot. Boom. Did it. <laughs> nice. Well, it, does nine, it does nine damage, so which is infuriatingly not ten damage. <laughs> yeah, that's such a weird number, actually. <laughs> Why is it nine damage? Nine damage. That's definitely Eugen being like, haha, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> It should totally be a ten damage shot. <laughs> yeah, it should. If your if your artillery's doing it, if your if your artillery's doing that, it should it should get it. <laughs> Panzer four, actually another Panzer four on this bottom side dying to the Sis three there. Oh, that's not oh. fun. And the T thirty four eighty five engaging the Panzer Grands. The Panzer three might be able to help engage the T-3485 at close range, to be honest. But here we go, like, the Mimil's, like, committing all of this stuff on the bottom side now to try and make a large, nastish effort, but all the while, like, his infantry or half-track on the top side got taken out. Uh, there's infantry and tanks flooding onto his side hill here uh, elsewhere on the map, so we're just going to slowly but surely see the destruction of the remainder of Mimil's forces as he makes his last push in this game. Yep, Zis 3 took out another Martyr 1. I think this is the most value I've ever seen Zis 3s get. They've killed a lot of stuff. And, and Zis 3s are not amazing AT guns. They're 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 aggressively costed, I'll give them that. But uh they have been they've been picking up the kills to be sure. And this is again the issue with 20th Panzer. I really like the division, but um it actually really struggles at, against divisions with lots of 2K armor. It doesn't have a lot to deal with it. Yeah, it also struggles against like 45 mils and cis threes <laughs> because a lot of its units don't actually have that much armor. You know, he's, he's definitely reliant on Panzer IV Gs in his deck. So, like, those have 65 armor instead of 70. Um, or, or even, is it even higher on a Panzer IV H? It, it's, 70, it's 75 on a Panzer IV yeah. H. Not that it's, it still gets penned by a 45 mil all the time, but it, it's just, yeah, it, it the division really. You know, when when your opponent has T thirty four eighty five spam, you actually I mean you have a pack forty three, but he didn't bring that in. But even that, like against SU one five twos is not good because the SU one five two kills it half the time. Yeah, it wouldn't be good value in this matchup because the SU one five two is no. cheaper than it. So you wouldn't even be trading properly. No, yeah, so it's just not I, I have to assume Yaman counterpicked him. That would be my guess. Oh, and uh, Mamil finally thrown in the towel there. Yeah, 47 minutes, 7 seconds later, and Yamin, yeah, coming to fruition with that massive KD. 4,420 kills, 2,955 losses, and it was a game that just kind of, about 20 minutes in, kind of felt inevitable. Yep. I don't know if you felt the same way. Absolutely. Maverick Mirror, I mean, once that B phase is over, it, it's just kind of who traded better up till that point, and then you just kind of grind it out from there. Uh, you're not getting enough points to really swing the match one way or another after that point. Yeah. So, yeah. Well played. Good game to Yaman. Game one there. It's it, This is a best of five, by the way. So hopefully we'll have lots of good games to see out of these incredible players. There you go. <laughs> a quick look at the kills and losses for you guys. But that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one. Have a good day. Goodbye.